easy rough in mini split tips. If you want an easy way to rough in a mini split system for a new construction home, new construction build, I'm going to give you some tips and some options that I use to rough in the mini split, the cable, the wire, and the drain. Then I'm going to give you a tour of this barn dominium and show you how we laid out the HVAC and some tips for you so you can know more about laying out the HVAC in a barn dominium. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad. Let's get started. There are three options I use to rough in the line sets, the cable, and the drain for a mini split in a new construction home. One way is using a rough in box. If you do not know what a rough in box is, I'll put a link to a video down below that shows you what a rough in box is and how I've used that in the past. The only disadvantage and the only problem you may have with a rough in box is if you do not make sure that it is properly insulated, that box can sweat and then that can damage your wall. The second way is taking and just running your line sets, your cable and your drain up in the wall and then taking and bending them out and then curling them up. The problem with that is you may not be able to work with those line sets, that cable, that drain, and it may not look the best whenever you're finished with it. You got to make sure that where the unit's going to go and the line sets are going to be is going to be able to be easily hooked up. The third option is taking and installing a piece of sheetrock where you're going to install your indoor wall mount air handler and then you just go ahead and install that wall mount air handler before you install your insulation you install those line sets the drain you hook everything up and then outside whenever you get electricity to your build then you come back you install the outdoor unit hook it up to the power and then start it up this is a very easy option but you have to make sure that you have some plastic and some maybe tape that way you can actually cover up this indoor wall mount air handler so that it doesn't get damaged or it doesn't get dirty during the build process because if we didn't cover this up during the foaming then this wall mount air handler would be covered in foam let me show you so this is plastic and tape that was used to cover up the wall mount air handler uh, before the foam insulation was installed and that way you don't have a bunch of foam insulation on that unit also whenever they're doing the sheetrock whenever they're painting they'll cover it back up just to make sure that it doesn't get dirty now as far as the size this is a 12,000 BTU model so this will do anywhere from mm, 300 to 600 square foot depending on the insulation this is the master bedroom right here that's the master closet, that's the master bathroom. And I'm gonna explain why we installed a mini split for this section of the house because there is another unit, but let me show you the outdoor unit first. Here are the outdoor units, and this is the outdoor unit that's connected to that wall mount air handler. This is a 12,000 BTU single zone Samsung unit. And if we didn't rough in the line sets, then they would have to come up, come out somewhere up there and then you would have them exposed and you may have to get a line set cover, which I know a really good line set cover that you can use, permacover.com. And I've got a discount code. Go check it out in the link in the description if you need a very good durable metal cover for your line sets. This is the unit for the rest of the house. This is an HMH7 York modulating variable capacity outdoor unit this is connected to a horizontal air handler and you can see it's a three ton c 36,000 btu hmh7 the most important thing a contractor can do is make sure that the drains are draining out water because if it's not draining out here it's draining out somewhere inside and you don't want that i'm going to close this window let's go over the rest of the duck work and unit placement this is the barn dominium right here just want to show you the outside before we go inside and take a look at everything all right now inside you can see this is going to be the kitchen area and then there's upstairs we're going to have a rail right there then you've got the return you can see that return duct and that 20 by 30 filter then you can see up above us, we've got a couple vents in this vaulted ceiling area. So let's look at all the vents. Let's talk about why I put that mini split there. I'm going to show you the upstairs unit. This is where the thermostat is for the upstairs. It's not mounted, of course, 
We just got it temporary, and there is the filter. Now, let me show you the upstairs unit. Now that we're upstairs, you can see there are a couple more vents right here. There's our return. And here's a couple vents that go down into a closet area to get to the lower area. Here's where the attic access is. And there's that horizontal air handler. And here's the supply trunk. This is a three ton unit. That means it's rated for 1200 CFM. We can do about 12 six inch vents with this unit. So let's count the vents. We got one, two, nothing here, but I'll show you how this is framed out. See that duct framed out, goes up and then over to the unit. So we had one, two, nothing in there. There's three and then in here there's four. All right. Out here, five, six, and then seven, eight. Then we got those vents that go downstairs. So let's go downstairs. Not finished with the build yet. Use open cell foam. Now that we're downstairs, you can see there are some lines that come down out of that closet area. And there's one line that goes over here and you can see there's one vent, that's nine, and another vent for this bathroom, that's 10. All right, and then if we come back over this way, then we got two more vents, and that is 11, and one more, 12. And that will equal a total of 1200 CFM, or around that. And there's our 20 by 30 return grill, and the reason, I'm sure you can see now, the reason why we did not take and install a four ton unit is because how do you get the vents from this area, which is the only area we had to come down into the first floor, how do we get those vents all the way through those trusses into this area? There's not a good way to do that. So easy solution, we got another unit. And this is specifically for the master bedroom because who wants to take and cut a hole through all those? Nobody, nobody. And it wouldn't be a good idea. So, and plus you got two units, we got more redundancy. I like this, this is gonna be nice. Let me know what, what you think in the comments. Why did we choose to offer a heat pump instead of gas? I actually talked the homeowner out of gas. I talked them into the heat pump and I'll tell you why. Uh, they've got a gas dryer, a gas on-demand hot water heater, and a gas stove. But the reason I didn't want them to go with a gas unit is because we do not have the option of natural gas out here. We only have the option of propane. And I do not like propane because you may pay $2 a gallon or a dollar a gallon during the summer to fill up the tank. But during the winter, if you run out, not only will you call the company, propane company, and some companies, it takes them a month to get to you. That's not good, number one. Number two is that $2 a gallon that you pay during the summer, that price is liable to be double, if not more. So you may be paying 4 or $5 a gallon for the same propane. That, to me, is a problem. So those two alone is a reason for me to push the heat pump. And I always go with something variable capacity so that the customer has a more efficient system and something that can work down to uh, the teens, 10, 5 degrees, and still provide really good heating. Since this is the kitchen area, you can see there's a half-inch gas line right here. This is track pipe. I love track pipe. Easy to work with. This is the gas line for the water heater. And you can see this is a little bit bigger. This is three quarter inch track pipe. You got a shut off, three quarter shut off, a nipple and a cap. And then there's one more gas line right here. This is half inch as well. And this is for the dryer. Love track pipe, very easy to use. Here's the gas tankless hot water heater right here. Uh, Renai, very good brand. 
Here's some rolled up track pipe. You can see what it looks like on the end. Got that stainless steel. Very nice. Let me show, show you something outside you have to do for your gas lines. Propane tank's gonna be out here somewhere. You wanna make sure that you get a pressure gauge. That way you can actually put pressure on your lines and pressure test them to make sure you don't have any leaks. Here's the gas line right here on the other side of the wall where it comes in and you can see that track pipe running up inside the joist. You wanna make sure you check with local codes because you may not be able to leave a connection inside the wall. You may have to have some type of access cover. So check your local codes before you do anything. Also check and see if you can use track pipe because some local codes, they require a hard uh, black iron. They do not let you use the flexible type track pipe. So if a customer is wanting you to cut holes and run duct work in tight spots, Remember, mini splits are a great option, and you can install several mini splits on one outdoor unit. If you haven't seen my mini split project where I installed nine indoor units on a log cabin, I'll put that video down in the link in the description. If you want to learn more about working on mini splits, I've got a video and it's titled How to Work on Mini Splits. And I go through all the different components and different problems that I have in the field. That way I can familiarize you with what you may see in the field when you go to work on a mini split. So go check out that video. I put the rough in box video down below so you can learn about, more about those rough in uh, options that you've got. And I've also got a video on a solar powered mini split. If you haven't seen that, that one's really cool. So go check it out. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, questions can lead to new content. So put your questions down below. But if you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are. Let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash homeowners. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.